In this lesson, we are going to discuss the game camera. You may have noticed by the router we have a few icons. Two of these icons have to do with the game camera, so let's start there. The first thing we will look at is the blue camera shaped icon, which in fact represents the game camera. You can select this like any other object, so let's hit up on the D-pad and open its properties. The first option is advanced settings. We discussed this earlier in the advanced object lesson, so no need to go over that again. Next we have move camera. You can move the camera around in the editor like any other object, but this option gives you the real time view of what the camera view will be. Hit X to enter this view mode, then use the analog sticks to adjust the camera position. Once you are happy with the camera position, hit X again to place it and you will be returned back to the camera properties menu. Or you can hit circle to return to the default position. Next we have advanced camera settings. These settings give you even more control on how the camera works. Let's go through these real quickly. The assisted setting takes in more perimeters than simply the camera target location when it's in motion. It will look at the target object's velocity and the path ahead to try to give the player the optimal view as they play. Follow determines what the camera follows. By default, the camera is set to follow the game character. You can also choose to have the camera follow different objects if you like. Move this slider over to object and select followed object appears. Use this selector to pick the object you want the camera to follow. Disable assist on crash will disable the assisted camera settings when you crash. Next we have FOV or field of view. This determines how wide the view of the camera is. To some extent, this simulates the settings on a real world camera. A low number is like a telephoto lens where objects appear bigger but you can see less of the area around the object. A high number makes the objects appear smaller and you can see much more of the surrounding environment. Once again, you can hit square on a lot of these options to reset them to the default setting. Position behavior determines how the camera reacts to its relative object as that object moves through the track. This is easiest to explain with visual aids. For this example, the curved line represents the driving line, the circle represents the camera target, and the box with the arrow represents the game camera. The default behavior is driving line. With this setting, the camera takes into account the relative object's horizontal rotation. Glue to target reacts similar to driving line, but it also takes into account the target object's vertical rotation as well. Keep position does not take into account the target object's rotation, so the camera will always stay at the same angle it is at the start. With static, our last option, the camera will rotate to follow the target but will not move from its starting position. Position interpolation determines how quickly the camera adjusts to a moving target. A low number and the camera is slow to adjust and will fall a bit behind with a fast moving target. A high number is quick to adjust and will keep its relative position to its target fairly well. Target behavior uses the other game camera icon, the target that appears in front of the rider. This is the point the camera is fixed on and adjusting its behavior determines how it will react when the bike is moving. The behavior states for the target are the same as for the camera. Of course, you can also pick up the target and move it to adjust where the camera looks. Target interpolation, just like position interpolation, determines how fast the target's position will adjust to the movement of the object it is tied to. Start animation type is the camera movement that players see when they first start your track, before the 3, 2, 1 countdown. We have three settings here. Default is preset and we have none and custom. With it set to default, the next option is preset animations. Classic is the default setting, but you can play around with these and pick something else if you like. To view these animations or do a hard restart, click the right stick, R3, at the start while testing your track. None means your track starts immediately with the 3, 2, 1 countdown. Custom gives you more options below. Number of clips is where you set the number of camera clips you want to include in your start animation. Clip transition is where you select how the clip or clips will fade into one another. Our options are none and fade to black. Clip transition time is how long the transitions are. This is measured in game ticks. Select animation start path is where you would select a path node. We will talk more about path nodes in the path follower lesson later in the series. Clip motion type is where you would select the animation curve for your animation movement. Clip duration is where you would set the speed of your clip animation. A lower number would be a faster animation and a higher number would be slower, smoother movement. Once again, we will discuss this further in the path follower lesson later in the series. Now let's back out of this menu and move on to visual settings. In this menu is where you would adjust the look of your track. 
For the sake of time, we're not going to go too deep into all of these right now. We will just look at a few key options. Visual preset is first. These are quick options that can be exactly what you need or get you started in the right direction. Custom is first. This option will be set automatically if you make any additional adjustments to any one of these other presets. Default is the normal look of the track. We also have CCTV, cell shaded, sin color, old camera, toy army, night vision, and inferno. The next thing we'll talk about is post-processing effects. In here, you have the camera filter selector. There are many options here to choose from to get many different looks for your tracks. Camera filter blend time is the time it takes to blend the camera filter if you change it during gameplay. A low number will be a quick change, and a high number will be a smoother, gradual transition. Okay now, color tint, exposure and brightness, hue and saturation, levels, and curve are all used to adjust the camera colors, brightness, and overall look of the picture. You could do an internet search to get more information on what each of these terms means and how they affect the picture. Chromatic aberration, scan lines, glitching, splatter, bloom, vignette, and cell shading are all effects that are added to the camera. You can explore these later on your own to see the effects. The next thing we'll talk about is depth of field. This is another property that simulates real-world camera lenses. The depth of field of a camera lens refers to how much of the image will be in focus. First is enabled. This is more or less the on and off switch for this option. Unchecked, everything in the camera view will be in focus. Checked, the focus target will be in focus, but everything else will be out of focus. Focus target determines where the camera sets its focal distance. With the router selected, the router will always be in focus. Set it to object, and you can select any object in the game world to be your focal point. With it set to custom value, you can set a custom distance to be your focal point. For instance, if you set it to 10 meters, all items 10 meters away from the camera will be in focus, but everything else will be out of focus. The other two sliders are near and far blur. Near blur determines where the blur starts between the focal point and the camera. Far blur determines where the blur starts past the focal point. Let's back out to the main properties menu for the camera, and the next option we will look at is Reset Camera Position. This will reset the camera to the default position. Reset All to Default will reset all the settings you've adjusted back to the default look. And the last option in this menu is Always Show Visualization. Unchecking this will hide some of the visual cues that are normally visual, like the camera range. Remember, when you test or play a track, however, none of these will be visible. Okay, now I'm going to quickly mention the red camera. This is the replay, secondary, and multiplayer camera. This camera has all the same options as the game camera, so no need to go over that again. Used mainly for supercross and replays, this camera can also be used for gameplay, which we will discuss in a later tutorial. You can move and or rotate this camera to however you like, and reset it in the properties menu if you need to. 